Hello and a warm welcome. I'm Armin Trost, professor at the Furtwangen University in Germany. And this is my series on human resources strategies, a real master course for advanced HR students, professionals and executives. This series is available on YouTube and on all podcatchers like iTunes or Spotify. All slides that support this series are available on my website. For more information, please read the description to this YouTube or podcast. I'd also like to refer to my book, Human Resources Strategies, available at most online bookstores. So, again, thanks for listening. Have fun and gain valuable insights into the fascinating world of HR strategies. So, welcome back. Today we talk about competence models and competence models for sure belong to the most commonly used concepts in HR in general. And also when it comes to talent management, competence models are absolutely key. You find them anywhere. And I've seen many, many organizations that whenever they think about talent management, they start thinking about competence models. Um, and one question here, of course, is how could you tell whether someone is good enough? How can you tell this? A high potential, an employee, um, a leader. And of course, in HR, we very often think in that direction that we say, okay, we have to define those competencies that are somehow relevant for being successful in a certain position. And let's talk about this because it's not so, so clear as things seem to be. And um, when you Google, when you just Google competence model, when you Google leadership framework, um, leadership competencies, what you very often get is something like um, uh, this kind of wheels, yeah? pictures of wheels. Do the pic picture search on, on, on Google, then you find a lot of models that are like circles or something like this. And in these circles, wheels, um, you very often find competencies that pretty much sound similar. Yeah. Um, for instance, I found one of a executive consulting firm and uh, they propose things like provide strategic orientation, empowering people, entrepreneurial spirit, decision strength, self-reflection, aligning the organization. So these are the typical things, connecting people, lead through difficult transformation. And really, the idea is that if you demonstrate all these attributes, then you probably are a successful leader. Um, so we call we talk about traits more or less. In psychology, you would say traits, attributes. And I mean, the idea is clear. Let's say you are an employee somewhere and you want to know uh, what does it need to become a leader? How, how do I have to be? So you might knock at the HR department store or you would ask the CEO, hey CEO. <laughs> How must I be so that I become a leader? And then the CEO will respond and will refer to the competence model saying, hmm, you must be capable of providing strategic orientation. Oh, what is that? <laughs> and you might say, okay, you know, strategic orientation. Oh, that's, that's, that's huge, you know. This is knowing the markets, knowing the core competencies of our company, knowing the customer's demands, knowing our competitive advantage or what the competitive advantage might be, what are the strategic priorities in our organization and why, and how do we translate our strategic priorities our future competitive advantage into a clear plan, not for tomorrow, but for the upcoming five years. And how can we translate these strategic thinking, the strategy into a vision so that the people understand the vision and they feel the vision and they like the vision. So you got it? This is what you're capable, you need to be capable of. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> wow, that's uh, that's interesting. Connecting people. You must be able to connecting people. What does that mean? You must not only be a great networker. Yeah, you must not only have thousands of followers on Twitter or or LinkedIn or wherever. You must be capable of building communities, connecting people. Yeah, you have to know how you have to interact, to collaborate, communicate, engage, empower people so they come together as a strong community. Can you do this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. And this goes on and on and on. Okay. Um, yeah. And, you know, the, the, the idea is really simple here. Um, it's not only about attributes, very often. It's very often also about good behavior. So when you have a look at different competency models, uh, you sometimes find traits, attributes, but also things that good leaders do. Very often you have this mixture of, of both. You must be capable of doing this or you, you are like this. Yeah? Um, and, and why are competence models there? Uh, they are very often there because they serve as a kind of strategic framework for various things related to HR. Something like you want to select people. You want to select leaders. When you hire them from the outside, you want to make sure, okay, is that a good leader? What makes up a good leader? Well, a good leader provides strategic orientation. A good leader is capable of managing tension. A good leader is capable of empowering people. A good leader is, uh, takes responsibility. A good leader is open-minded and so on. And then you use these different competencies and you match the candidate along these different dimensions. And then you will come up with a conclusion saying, hmm, is that good enough or not, right? Or for promotion, should we promote John? Hmm, let's look at the competencies. Does he fit or not, right? You, 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 you wonder whether you should nominate Susan for the high potential pool, yeah, for a talent management program, and you think about, hmm, how good is Susan? Are there already any signs that she at least could be good in certain things? Yeah. Did she progress on those competencies in the very last uh, years or months? Yeah, or or you want to evaluate a leader? Yeah, is she really a good leader? Hmm, don't know. Let's check based on these seven competencies that we believe in, and then you come up with a profile telling, hmm, okay, she's not a good leader. She's a good leader. <laughs> so. This is the fundamental idea. And, you know, here's the strategic question that you, you need to, to make whenever it comes to competence model. Because when it comes to the question, is competence using competence model a good idea or not a good idea? I mean, everything sounds very reasonable. The, the question really is how, how you use it. And when I refer to these different ways of using HR, of doing HR, is it a more centrally planned and controlled way of doing HR? Or is it more a people-centered enabling HR? You, you use competence models very different. And one way, of course, is the traditional way of saying, look, people, here's the competence model. That's the frame. This is how you must be, or these are the behaviors you must be capable to demonstrate. And if you don't fit to this model, you will never become a leader in this organization. Not now and not in the future. Okay? Uh, and who is telling this? <clears throat> it's HR. It's the CEO. It's the executive board. It's strategic. It's, uh, it's top-down defined. And, and that could make sense. That absolutely could make sense because it provides guidance, orientation, um, a decent foundation for rational decision. Okay? No doubt about it. It could make sense. But, you know, the opposite way of using competence model is telling the people, look, Susan, we don't know what the critical competencies are for you now or in the future. We don't know. You have to find out. It's your, it's your job to understand in which ways you need to be good. So, I mean, you want to be a leader. So the first thing is you have to manage yourself. Managing yourself 
means that you understand about yourself in which context you are working, in which context you want to lead, which kinds of leadership challenges you will face. So you better think of that, let's say, five or seven competencies you're better good at. Think about it. And maybe, maybe you use a coach and, and, and the coach will ask you exactly this. And it's not that anybody tells you, look, this is the competence model. You have to create your own competence model. And some companies have a, let's say, a catalog, a catalog of various competencies. Yeah? I know the example of Microsoft. They had this box, yeah, in a, really a nice box. And in this bo nice box, there were cards. I don't remember how many competencies there were. I, 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 as far as I can tell, it was 29 different competencies. And every competence was represented by a separate card, a very nice colored card um, with different, where the different levels of the competencies were clearly described. Does it mean level one, two, three, four, or poor to excellent? So you could pull the card, look, okay, is that something that is relevant for me? Hmm, no. Okay, let's look at the next competence. Hmm, is that relevant? Hmm, maybe, yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's take this one and take this one. So, and it's your decision to use it. So, Competencies model must not only be something normative, where the company tells you, look, this is how you have to be. could also be something that you use for your own orientation, yeah? as, a, as something that will help you to create your own competence model. I, I find this very smart, and this is, a, this is a strategic decision how you want to use these things. So, um, what I want to do now is I would like to take away a little bit your naivety, if, if, if there is any. Um, I, I know that in the HR community, um, many HR professionals, many HR executives deeply believe in competence models, really. And uh, I, I know why, as I already have outlined. But, but there are some reasons why why competency models sometimes are not really a good idea. Yeah? And, and here is why. Competencies sometimes might be very hard to be measured in, in a valid way. I mean, you know, I'm a psychologist, and I know some things about um, the human mind, about the human thinking, about human competence can be measured in a very valid way. Things like, for instance, intelligence. Intelligence can really be measured in a very, very well way. But there is not a valid tool, a valid method to measuring the competence of people regarding empowering people or managing tension. There might some, and some consulting firm have invented some tools, maybe, but very often these tools are not really scientific. And it, it's, it's, it's really hard sometimes to, to measure these things. And, and the question that goes along with that is, I mean, who is supposed to, to evaluate these competencies? And who is capable of doing that? I mean, very often in the practical setting, you have, you have managers who evaluate other managers. But, I mean, on which basis do they do this? I mean, most, most managers, most executives never studied psychology. They, they, they very often do not have the proficiency and the experience to precisely evaluate the competencies of grown people. So you always must assume that there is a, a limited validity of everything you get here, right? And, you know, another thing here is something that we always knew in, in, uh, in research, especially when it came to leadership success. There was always this idea that, of course, there might be some attributes successful leaders share Uh, where intelligence, for instance, is one of the, of the most important. But, but what we also know from research since decades is there is not one specific stable set of competencies that lead to, to success. This always depends on the situation also. Right? 
Um, and, you know, leaders can be successful by being completely different. You can, you can look in different areas. You can look at uh, uh, football coaches, for instance. You can look at politicians. Think about some politicians. Think about three politicians in history that were outstanding. Think about three scientists that were outstanding. Think about three artists that were outstanding. And if you compare the three in whatever field, you will find that the politicians, the scientists, the artists, the football coaches were different. Really different. Look at successful CEOs. I mean, of course, there might be a core, and the core is probably something like being smart, <laughs> right? Um, being uh, showing a high level of social intelligence, maybe, of course. But, you know, different sets of competencies might lead to similar outcomes. Uh, that's also something that we very often find in sales. You have different salespeople and they share completely, have completely different competencies, completely different. Some salespeople are very, very successful because they can convince people. Yeah. Other are extremely successful because they know the product and they know the competitors. So some act in a more social way and some think uh, act more in a, in a factual way. Okay? So that's, that's something important. Competence models also very often are very static. So it could be that if you have your competency model today, that's no more valid tomorrow. Or maybe not tomorrow, but, but maybe in two years. I mean, we know digitization changed everything, right? And uh, critical attributes that we had five years ago might not be those critical competencies that we, that we rely on um, uh, today, right? So they are very static. And, and another thing that is really crucial is competency models always describe individuals, right? I mean, that was always the idea in HR that use competencies to describe John, Susan, a specific CEO, a specific candidate. They are always applied on an individual level. But is that the right level, really? Is performance not something that is more often demonstrated in teams? It, wouldn't it be more appropriate to look at the competencies of teams? Is it really necessary that in a team everybody shares the same competencies? Or isn't it more important that at least one person in the team has a strong competence in one thing and the other person has a strong competence, is competence in another thing? So now we talk about diversity. So here is this idea of external comp compensation. You might be weak in one thing, but you have a colleague who is strong in exactly this. Or you are strong in something and you have a colleague who is weak in that, which is fine. Yeah? You cannot be perfect in everything, so better have a team that when you combine the team, you have, you have all the competencies available. I mean, look at the most successful team in history. Oh, what was the most successful team in human history? Hmm. I have my answer. The Beatles. <laughs> the Beatles. Of course, the Beatles, they were the most successful team in human history. In my eyes. Okay, how can I measure this? When I mean, you look at the Beatles, I mean, four times John Lennon would not make the Beatles. Not at all. It's the combination. I and mean, when you look at the Beatles, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, George Harrison, they were different. Of course, they shared a common ground. They were all musicians, <laughs> of course. Yeah. That's essential to be able to communicate and collaborate with each other. Yeah. But they had different strength. Of course they had, and that made the the um, uh, the team very successful or think about very successful teams of founders i mean the one of the uh, best well known successful team is maybe 
Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. I mean, that's a, that's the model that you very often find in the IT industry. And not only in the IT industry. You have one person who is very deep in technology and the other person is extremely deep in business. Great. Bill Gates, Steve Ballmer. It was good that these two guys were not similar. And one strength was the weakness of the other. I, I worked many years at SAP and we had Dietmar Hopp and Hasso Blattner. These two persons who respected each other uh, extremely, they were completely different. And that was cool. So it would have been a mistake to evaluate both based on, on the same competence model. I sometimes would even say that competence models avoid diversity. What you want to have is in a team, you want to have different people who are re really, it would be not a good idea to have people who all fit to one and the same competence model. Okay? Sometimes people can, can compensate weaknesses internally. You might have a weakness in one thing, but a strength in another thing. You might say, okay, I'm not so good in presenting well, but I'm very good in um, creating the presentation. <laughs> right? um, I'm not so good in uh, selling the product, but I'm very good in developing the product. And that's okay. That's cool. Right? Um, very often, I mean, it really depends on the situation. A strength can be also a weakness. We, we, we know that there is not something like a strength or a weakness per se. Whether something is a strength or a weakness really depends on the situation. And, you know, there is one other idea that is so fundamental in psychology. It's really, I mean, that's on a level of kitchen psychology. <laughs> uh, we know that if you want people to show any kind of performance or any kind of performance uh, behavior, then two things must apply. It's not, it's not only that they could do something, it's also that they would do something. So the possession of a competence does not necessarily lead to its application. One could, but wouldn't. You see, I want to see this point. I want you to see this, okay? It's really crucial. So having shared all these thoughts about competency model must not necessarily mean that, that you must think in a negative way about competency model. I just wanted to add something to this very often shared glorification of competence model. Okay? And as I said earlier, uh, it's not the question of whether competency models are good or not that's that's not that's not the key point the key point really is how you want to use them are they something that provide orientation so that you can create your own competence model maybe in your team or are competency models something is that something that is normative yeah prescribed by top management that's the crucial thing okay so, let's leave it to that. Thanks for listening and see you next time.